It's the first morning of the Insurance Conference 2015. Risk Africa TV comes to you from Sun City. We're joined now by Dr. Andreas Schell, Global Head of Claims Short Tail for AGCS. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Dr. Schell has shared with us this morning, really you, you opened your presentation talking about the critical importance of claims as the, you know, it really is the key value proposition that insurers offer, uh, you said. Um, could you just uh, t just unpack that a little bit for me and talk about how uh, insurers and perhaps brokers as well could be doing better in this area? Well, my impression is that um, brokers and insurers could be doing better by actually starting very early on the communication between claims and both of these people because um, the better you know somebody and if you've already had experience with them just be it a conversation uh, it's already helpful um, to not have guards go up when a loss occurs when a loss occurs that's usually a critical and sensitive time to the insured as well as the broker um, and therefore um, any kind of disruption there translates into friction and problems in, later on. So, as an insurer, you're best advised, at least from my perspective, that you have claims people establish contact with clients and brokers even before a loss occurs, actually within the phase of making the deal, explaining the product, giving examples, and thereby illustrating the product much better and driving expectations. The next step would then be, if actually a loss occurs, or actually, let me st take a step back. Even on a regular basis, it might be very sensible to have pre-loss conversations or meetings, um, say at annual renewals or so. But then once a loss occurs, if it's a major loss, I think uh, an insurer should best uh, send own staff to the site right away to be present, to show that they're in this whole effort, and to establish early on that they're interested in dealing with it. Um, and then, of course, the rest remains constant communication, exchange, being transparent about what your thought process is, even if it leads to a coverage denial, um, and then talking about what exactly are those problems. Um, you stressed that the, uh, that the key here is communication, 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 and that the central, uh, you know, that the, the, to building trust and transparency, having that open line of communication is, is key, um, and for managing client expectations. What are, I mean, you've touched on it, on it already, but what are some of the practical steps for building that line? Mm -hmm. Well, it's really having conversations all the time, making sure that you are in touch and that the client loses any kind of... Um, reservation about who you are and what's going to happen. So illustrate the process of notification of the next steps. Um, what BI loss mitigation can be about. Um, who, which experts will actually be coming on scene because usually you will have a loss adjuster in the game, you will have experts, technical experts, you may have forensic accountants and I think the client should be well aware of who these people are and what they're supposed to be doing and what it is they are benefiting them from their activities. So if, if, uh, if, that's, if this is improving and proactively improving the relationship and uh, speeding up claims processes, etc., et is there ever a need to go the route of litigation of uh, dispute resolution? It, should, should that be something you're aiming to avoid entirely always? Okay, well, obviously you can't always avoid confrontation. Let's not put it to that word it's really a difference in opinions. Um, a contract is usually something that is interpretable and of course expectations are there on both sides of how these will be interpreted. My normal course of action would be to say talk as long as you can to find agreement um, and actually I think our records display that because our um, loss, loss litigation uh, percentage is actually not even a percentage, it's a fraction of a per mil. So, yes, indeed, we're very keen on finding a solution, and usually there is, but also, of course, if you have a difference in, as being partners, then you have to decide, to let somebody else decide for you, because obviously you just can't arrive at a conclusion. What are some of the key steps leaders need to take to build this kind of culture uh, and, and this approach within organizations? For me, um, Training and developing people is really the most important effort. Instilling corporate culture that actually tr leads them to display that kind of behavior that I've just described. For me, it's important to empower people, to delegate these uh, uh, tasks really, so that they 
feel as if they own them, and then they will deal much better with clients, be far more um, sort of real and uh, not sort of in a role they're playing, because they will be doing this on their own behalf. And that's what really helps in, in, in dealing with these situations and also having the empathy with the client to understand what they're going through and then sort of building on that. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time.